Holy shit, it's August. How did we get here? Anybody else surprised by this? Well, I guess it's time for another theme in my B5 passion journal, which I've been enjoying so far. And for this month's simple, colorful theme, I'm going to be using Karen Deco brush markers. This is the acrylic pigment that is the complement to their uh, original water-based brush pen. So these are kind of like regular paint pens where you shake the marker and then you have the brush tip which is super exciting because not many paint pens have that brush tip. I've been waiting for these all my life. The colors are amazing, so I hope you enjoy seeing them in action today. I'm just thinking about how fast this summer has gone. I know I'm not the only one, but as an educator, who does not get summers off because I, I work at a university and I'm not faculty, I'm staff, I don't get the summers off. And so when we do get summer, it is a different pace. It is a time where the work changes a little bit and we have to, you know, we still have projects to do, but it just feels a little different. And our priority is to get refreshed and renewed for the fall. And we are still reeling from the last year and a half. We really had to do so much to flip our content in a meaningful way for the students. We didn't want to just phone it in. We wanted to make sure the students had a really meaningful experience. There were so many changes and uncertainties based on what the university wanted and what the state and federal wanted. And plus it was um, an election year. So we're all kind of still wiped from holding space and being reliable for students. And so there's a little bit of me that's like just trying to recover from that. And hoping that I can by the time that summer is over. Um, and I guess, you know, that's the narrative that I keep playing is the, oh my God, there's only so much time left. How did this happen? It passed by so fast. And a lot has happened. If you've been following, you know that I have moved, the office has moved. So all that shifted. And once we recovered from that, I had a couple of trips and, and things happen. And July was really rough in some ways. It was ups and downs. And for me personally, dealing with some depressive stuff where I just didn't have any motivation, super, super distracted, hard for me to get up out of bed some days. And, you know, that's been really challenging to manage. Um, I'm working with someone to kind of figure that out. And also it's been really hard for people that I love and, and watching them go through such a hard time is also really challenging. You want to be there for them and you want to support them in the best way possible. And that gets challenging when you have your own stuff. So when I look back, no wonder it kind of passed by in a daze. I was so distracted. Um, and I think that's probably half the reason why, because I wasn't super present to the things that were happening. Um, I, I will say that there's been an, a lot of things that I've enjoyed about summer, but maybe the combination of the malaise, the languishing, the fatigue really kept me from being as present as possible and relying on just distractions from my phone and Netflix and stuff does not not help. So trying to shift how I'm going to be experiencing the rest of this summer this is challenging for me. This is like an ongoing thing, but I remember years ago, I have a friend and colleague who always had this countdown for the summer. And from the first day, he was like, hey, there's, you know, 82 days left of summer. And he'd remind us periodically like, oh, 71 days left of summer, 22 days left of summer. And I'd just be like, why are you doing this to me? This feels like this dread or whatever. And for years, this happened where I'd just be like, damn it, why, why? And it wasn't until he hosted a conversation in June of this summer where he was like, I do that because it is a reminder to me of how to kind of direct the rest of my summer and make sure that I have adventure and that it's not something that just slips by because I'm working or I'm tied up in some of those productivity things. And when he said that, I was like, well, first of all, why didn't you tell me this sooner? <laughs> and giving you such a hard time about it over the years. But it was a great opportunity to reset this, this narrative that I had in my mind of like, oh, summer's passing by so quickly and changing it to 
how can I really enjoy these everyday adventures in my life and relish the things that I already have going on that I want to soak up and enjoy. I think that's how time slows down is when we lose track of it in ways that are meaningful. So those nights with friends or diving into a project that you're really excited about. Um, And I want to reframe how I'm going to experience that. I started an adventure list because there's so many things that are wonderful about your local area that sometimes you just forget to, to take advantage of. And so on this list are things like paddling and going and getting on the water. I live in a state that has so many lakes and yet don't ever make it to the beach. Like what is that? So reshifting some of that because otherwise what I'll do is my default, which is fill in those weekends or days with work projects. So that is something that I'm going to make sure that I relish in the next couple of weeks. I do have some travel going on and I do um, have, you know, a cabin trip with my friends happening. So I do have an opportunity to do that. And I'm going to challenge myself to really get present to those things, enjoying those conversations with friends and not relying on the distractibility of going on TikTok or showing each other TikTok videos, as fun as that is. What are the other memories that we can create that we'll talk about later and forget about TikTok? And that's what I really want to focus on, getting together. So making sure that I have memories to scrapbook in my planner. (laughs) I started memory keeping. If you didn't see that last video, I'm loving it. So being able to live those moments that are going to be printed out and put into my memory keeping into my planner. Otherwise, it's going to really easily be pictures of me scrolling on my phone on my couch. I think something that I'm going to try is similar to how I meal plan once a month at the beginning, just to decide once and not have to try so hard to meal plan, is to do the same thing but with little adventures. And at the beginning of the month or just look out and just plan for something ahead of time so that I don't end up filling those things with just work and trying to get ahead of myself. So I'm going to look ahead, um, particularly to September and October, and trying to get these little things in. I have like trips and stuff, but some of the more everyday things and blocking off enough time for them is going to be really important. Someone had talked to me about time blocking. You know, it's a very common technique where people go on their digital calendar and block off, this is when I'm going to work on this, and these are the projects I'm going to focus on in this time period. And someone else reframed it for me in that they do it in a way where this is the uh, amount of time that they are going to give to this particular thing. And I really like that approach so that I can just plan on only giving this amount of time to work and using the rest for relaxation or play or something else. I would love to hear some of your favorite adventure list ideas down in the comments. I need some help because I, this is not my forte. Fun and recreation is not where my mind usually goes to. So if you have some creative ideas, please add them down below. I would love to hear them. Um, Just to talk a little bit about the actual planning that I'm doing right now is that I'm keeping these same logs that I've been using for the last couple months, but noting that the acrylic markers are not bleeding or shadowing on the other side of the passion planner pages which i think is super impressive because these are super juicy pens and they're not going to the back of the pages people have asked me how i'm liking the b5 size compared to the a5 size and i am really enjoying it they give me enough room in order to spread out and do some art without taking up too much of the page. I pack a lot of things into my daily pages, so I have a couple different categories for my life and wanting to separate those out. Before, I had everything just listed together in a stream of consciousness in my dailies, but then got really hard to review those at the end of the month. I would get lost in all the different tasks. So keeping them into different little buckets has been super helpful, but having the space to do that without, you know, feeling so cramped has also been kind of nice in the B5 size. 
I also do a lot of like gratitude keeping throughout the day and now I'm adding memory keeping within the dailies. So having some extra room is really helpful to just be able to spread my wings on what it is I want to track. And so I will reveal what my August pages look like. I just love a good galaxy. Some simple buckets for things to go into. This loose structure. I hope it's given you some ideas to consider for your own bullet journal. Let me know down below what was helpful, what you're going to try. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I will see you in my next video. Bye!